Well, okay. So, this video is gonna be about my mousetrap car. I hope you're ready. Okay. Let's do it. Star. Newton's three laws. The question is explain how Newton's first, second, and third law applies in my car's performance. So, <clears throat> in the first law, the car does not move until the force of the mousetrap moves it and doesn't stop until gravity or a balance force causes it to stop. <coughs> Second law, my it all depends on how much my car weighs. Will and how however much my car weighs will cause it to go slower or faster. And the third law, my car is like rolling my car is rolling and fiction is pushing against it but not as much to make it stop for the first few seconds so when the force and the friction are equal it causes the car to stop and not have any more momentum for number two the question is what are the two types of friction that affect the performance of your car. The two types of friction are static friction and surface friction. Um, well, for surface friction, I cause the surface of the wheels to like move more smoothly on the on the floor of the of the gymnasium so it will have a better glide and better momentum as going uh, I had four big wheels CD size uh, the direction and the weight was a big factor in why I choose these wheels and for number five, what kind of wheels and axles did you use? And what is the effect on a large or small wheel? Well, the smoothing out of the of the surfaces caused that the effect on a larger or smaller wheel to make it go faster. And also, I used like a pencil as my axle, which would let the CD turn more better. Better, but larger wheels means more friction. So if I had a chance to do it again, I would probably use smaller wheels this time, so that it would have less friction and more momentum to go by. And for the sixth and eighth question, discuss the effect of the length of a, of the lever arm in the pulling force of your car. Well, I didn't really take a big look at this, but I noticed that if I had a longer lever arm, my car would have gone much further and much faster because it was getting more power from the lever and the fish line would be perfect for the lever to like put that power in from the mousetrap car so and number seven how does the distribution of weight affect the traction of the wheels, the car's traction of the wheels. Well, the weight of the car causes the car to slow down and traction is like 
the act of like drawing or pulling. So if there's more weight, the traction will be much more. So that means that the vehicle, the vehicle will slow down more. So number nine, the more momentum that I had equals the more difference travel, but a lot of the energy will be consumed in doing this, so the momentum will carry on, but the energy will decrease tremendously, but the momentum will keep on. Okay, so now for the free body diagram. You always have your F normal force, your F gravity force. Then this friction over here is the force that's causing your car to move. But on the other side, right here, the force that could be slowing down your car is maybe the force of air resistance, which I can put at this moment, force of air resistance, and yep, okay, so we're having a meeting after school. Yeah, right here. First law, what? Where? At my an object office. tends to stay in motion. You know where that is. <laughs> in motion. You know where the post so, is? So, the car did not move. Is that your thing for physics? Oh, like, shit, so Kyle. <laughs> oh. I thought... We'll be back. Alright, bye. This is still recording. Where are you going, man? I'm back. You have to...